What's up? I'm Troubleshoot. Welcome back to another video. In this quick guide, I'll be showing you how to set up a control net in Automatic 11.11 Stable Diffusion Web UI. Essentially, you can give it an image, whether it's a depth map, sketch, just a normal picture or anything like that. It'll take it, run a few algorithms and things in it, and from that, build out an image that it will create another image from. It'll draw an outline around whatever picture you give it, or try to estimate a depth map, etc. There's a ton of different models that we can use, and it's actually a really, really cool plugin that's more than super powerful. Without further ado, let's go ahead and open up Automatic 11.11 Stable Diffusion Web UI. If you don't already have it installed, in the description down below, you'll find a link to the Windows and Mac installer. Now, I have a Windows installer script that makes this incredibly easy, and I'll open up a new folder on my desktop here where I'll install it fresh. So I'm opening the terminal as admin and in PowerShell here. We'll copy this folder path up here by clicking in an empty space, right click, copy, and inside of here, we'll CD space inside of quotes, paste in the folder we're going to. Now I'll run IEX IRM also 11.tc.ht, which is my one line install script, hit enter, and we'll wait for this to complete. If you'd like further info on installing it, check the description down below. For now, I'll skip through this. All right, there we go. We now have a desktop shortcut here. The web UI is now installed and actually open. If I control click the link here, it'll open up in my browser. And you can see we have Stable Diffusion 1.5. I can say hello, generate, and it should spin out an image. Everything's working as it should be. Interesting. Anyways, what we need to do is head across to extensions at the very top. Then inside of here, we'll look to see if we have Control Net currently installed. If you don't, head across to Available, then click Load From. In the search bar here, type in Control. And we're looking for SD Web UI Control Net. Web UI extension for Control Net. Note, work in progress, so don't expect seed reproducibility as updates may change things. We'll click Install next to this and wait for it to download and set up. Now we'll head to Install at the very top and click Apply and Restart UI. Now you should see a Control Net section here that we could use. From the preprocessor, I'll select Canny, for example. Model, there's nothing here. How do we get these models to use? Well, of course, we can pick a processor and get it to process our image however we want, but we need to download models for them to work at all. So navigate to where Automatic 11.11 Stable Diffusion is installed, open the Stable Diffusion Web UI folder, then Extensions, and inside of here, look for and open SD Web UI Control Net, then Models inside of here, and we should have a few files. What we need to do next is download some models. In the description down below, you'll find this Hugging Face page, Control Net 1.1. Here, you'll see a ton of different files, all of multiple gigabytes each. We have IP2P, Depth, Canny, InPaint, etc. These may be a little bit confusing to use, but for the most part, I mainly download and use Canny, Depth, Scribble, and maybe OpenPose. So in here, you can either download all of these or just the ones that you want. I'll download Canny by clicking the download button next to it. So for the heck of it, I've just downloaded all of them using this little command here to collect a bunch of download links. Anyways, there's many ways to get all of these files. So once we have the control net models we want, all we need to do is add them to this folder here. So you'll have the YAML file, which is the configuration and the PTH file, which is the control net model. For the most part, this is a huge waste of bandwidth downloading everything if you're not going to use everything. And there's still even more here that we haven't even got to such as these T2i adapters here. These, as far as I understand, are from this repository here and are, I think, older versions, but anyways, you can see them down at the bottom here. Okay, so with these models copied in, we just need to refresh the models here and you can see all of them here. Canny, for example, and preprocessor Canny. Whatever you select on the right, select on the left, and so on. We're mainly looking at the last bit here. Okay, so I'll select DPM++ 2SA Karis model 1.0. 5 is good enough. Let's go with a man with a beard. For control net, I'll search for a person with a beard, take a square image, and drag it into the control net section here. Now, if we generate an image, it's just going to generate a man with a beard. Pretty generic. But if we go to control net down here and enable it, now the next time we generate an image, it should use control net to make it look similar to the one that we have here based on the options we have selected. It'll take slightly longer. And there we go. Now we have a man with a beard that looks pretty similar to the input. Now, before you say anything about the image to image tab, this is completely different as it's completely controllable, etc. 
you can see the output image here and to the right, an image that was processed by ControlNet. This is the canny model here. Let's go for depth instead, say depth Lorez, and we'll select a depth model here. Now, if we generate once more, this time instead of looking for features and outlines, it'll create a depth map of what it imagines pieces to be in this picture, things closer to the camera and further behind. This is taking some time to download the Lorez model here. Some of these preprocessors will need to be downloaded, but anyways, when it's done, it should generate the image. And now based on depths, as you can see here, it created another image. These are just different ways of processing input images and creating an output. Using the open pose models here, you can import basically stick figures and create things that way. I'll give you an example, open pose and open pose. Google searching for open pose, we have a picture here, which is good enough. I'll take this, save it, and drag it into the control net section here. I think it might get a bit confused as it's not square, and I think we need open pose full as it's a full body. Generate. Now open pose will be downloaded as it's currently missing, and when the preprocessor is done downloading, it'll go ahead and process the image in just a moment. Ah, I see it's downloading all of the open poses. There we go. Hmm, I think I confused it. Just normal open pose? Not at all. Very weird. What about a square image? I'll just screenshot this and throw it in. Maybe now it's a bit happier. No. Preprocessor preview. Let's see. Hmm. Full hand. Right. I'm not entirely sure why this isn't working. I'll download some poses from Civit AI. All right. So using a T pose model instead. Preview. Well, it seems that open pose currently isn't working for me. But anyways, you get the point. If we choose maybe Canny, I'll go ahead and give it an image this time to work with. With Canny, for example. Preview. Yeah, no, but definitely works now. Cool. All right. Let's just go for logo lying on a beach of sand with a wave with ocean foam. That sounds pretty good. Generate. Now, shortly after, we should have a pretty good looking image. Cool. Anyways, you get the point. This reaches far beyond what we can do with image to image. It's incredibly powerful. And with all of these different options here, it means that we can do pretty incredible things with tons of ability to control what we're getting. Choosing depth will get a completely different output. And of course, depth res versus depth Midas, a different preprocessor model, this one being much bigger, should give us vastly different results. Depth Midas gives me something completely unusable in this case, depth Zoe an even bigger download. Okay, cool. This is giving me something different. Anyways, these are more designed around pictures. Each of these different options here are designed around different kinds of artwork. For the most part, Canny is what you're looking for, and it'll give you pretty good results. Obviously, the only thing left to do is generate a bunch of images and see where they go. But for the most part, that was setting up at a super quick crash course in using ControlNet. There's a ton of different options here that you can customize, like the weight of ControlNet, telling it how much it must listen to this pre-processed image over here, pre-processor resolution, canny low threshold and high threshold for canny. As for all of these different pre-processors, they'll all have their own options. For the most part, the control weight starting and ending steps will be similar throughout all of them, and even the pre-processor resolution. The starting step is how many steps into generating, control net will be started, and ending is when it will stop. Down at the very bottom, we even have a drawing canvas, where if we were to draw on here, this is the resolution that it's using. Anyways, that's really it for this quick video. So, thank you all for watching, my name's been Troubleshoot, and I'll see you all next time. Ciao!